Despite its enduring popularity among the reading masses, the self-help genre still has its critics. Self-help books are surrounded by perceptions that they have little to no effect on their readers. But should self-help books really get all that flack? Hi, I'm Patty, a librarian from Public Library Singapore, and I'm here today to defend the self-help genre. Early self-help books tended to make sweeping promises and false guarantees. They also mostly promoted positive thinking, a belief that life's only key to success is having an optimistic outlook. Mixed together with unsupported scientific claims and quotes from unnamed psychologists, these self-help titles created unrealistic expectations about the results they promised. However, these books were just a small fraction of the self-help titles published during that period. The question is then, are these stereotypes still true today? Increasingly, we are seeing new developments in the genre, which may help debunk these stereotypes. Modern self-help books have done away with the it worked for me, therefore it will work for you type of anecdotal approach. Hard scientific facts support ideas on habit forming, developing mindsets, maintaining happiness, and other major aspects of self-help. Increasingly, the authors of these books have established careers as academics, are journalists with a commitment to scientific methodologies, or are high-achieving individuals with proven track records. Self-help books are no longer about changing your life or having one-size-fits-all solutions. They focus more on small incremental changes that you can make to improve different parts of your life. The scale of change promised by these books have also decreased significantly over the last decade. For example, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey reached as both a self-help book and a leadership and management manual. Its Seven Habits guides readers to strive for continual improvement can be argued that self-help books are reflections of the anxieties and desires of our times. For example, one reoccurring theme is happiness, as evidenced in the rising trend in self-help books on happiness. Though the pursuit of happiness is not a new topic, it has become increasingly relevant today. Many of these books are based on cultural studies of what makes a particular society happy. The authors then distill these traits into principles that we can apply into our daily lives. The Little Book of Hugo by Mike Viking details the Danish secrets to happy living that leverages Denmark's reputation for being one of the happiest nations in the world. Hugo is often described as everything from the art of creating intimacy to the pursuit of everyday pleasures. Another common topic we see today is minimalism. Though not a new concept, books like Marie Kondo's The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up brought minimalism to the mainstream. In the book The Year of Less by Kate Flanders, the author details how she found herself spending more as her income increased, only to end up in debt. To overcome this, she decided not to shop for a year. This book details the surprising results she got after 12 months of not shopping and reducing her overall consumption. Another topic is digital wellness. To counter the dramatic rise in screen addictions, we are seeing an increase in books that advocate digital wellness, a lifestyle practice that encourages healthy device usage. In the book Digital Minimalism, author Kel Newport identifies digital decluttering strategies that can help turn us into digital minimalists. The book helps us rediscover the world outside of our devices and to find meaning and satisfaction without having to glance at our phones every once in a while. From digital wellness, we move on to mindfulness. Mindfulness has been gaining popularity as a practice in daily life and its application in clinical psychology. Science continues to illustrate the considerable physical and mental health benefits that mindfulness can offer. Ruby Wax is an American comedian with a master's degree in mindfulness from the University of Oxford. Despite being a comedian, she suffers from depression and details her healing journey using mindfulness in her book, How to be Human. Lastly, we have adulting. Catering to millennials, adulting was the Oxford Dictionary Word of the Year in 2016. It refers to the changing timelines of adulthood and how current socioeconomic trends lead to lifestyle and mindset changes. It also refers to the feeling of temporarily acting like an adult, but not being completely like one. To mediate this transition, there is an influx of books, apps, and content that help make adulting less intimidating. This is Water by David Foster Wallace is a book based on his commencement speech in 2005 to the graduating class at Kenyon College. The wisdom behind his speech is timeless and continues to inspire adults and young adults alike 
to find their footing in the world. And there you have it. Self-help books have grown beyond the preachy positive literature they were once thought to be. We should not use self-help books as a one-stop solution for all of life's problems. Instead, we should use them as one of the many tools available to us on our journey to being our best selves. We hope this has changed your mind on the self-help genre.